Hello everybody, welcome to the Blaster Overview for Alchemist. Alchemist is a pump-action springer that uses ball bearings in the priming block to have a very smooth prime. It also has a ball detent up here to lock forwards the priming block when running. It uses aluminum bars along the bottom of the blaster to hold the blaster together which means that it is extremely rigid. Very rigid. It has a quick swap barrel system. And it is very easy to swap the spring on. Alchemist is compatible with all Talon Claw springs and all Lynx springs and long shot upgrade springs for the Nerf long shot. So there's that. It has a wonderfully flared magwell for very quick reloads. Custom mag release for even quicker reloads where you can do it from inside the trigger guard with your middle finger, or as a paddle. Has an adjustable buttstock as default, but there are also uh, a few other buttstock options. You can have one with the SBL slash uh, worker extendable stock, uh, if you want that style instead. Uh, it also has a fixed non-adjustable stock, uh, and then it also has an end strike lug, or you can just have nothing back here if you want it slightly shorter. It has, by default, a silly spigot scar, which means you can shoot Mega XL darts off the tip, like so. Oh, I chambered a dart in there. Still fires great. And then also, the Picatinny rail on top has a gutter down the entire length of it, so you don't even need iron sights with this technically. Uh, if you are in a bind and you don't have any sights on this, you can just aim down the gutter sight all the way down the Picatinny rail. It is still quite accurate. Let's do a bit of firing, uh, and then I'll show you the barrel swap again and a spring swap. Another bag. I'm gonna shoot across the room a little bit now. Have a target across the room that I am hitting directly. back. So there's some firing of Alchemist. Now for in order to uh, swap the spring I need to show you how to swap the barrel because that's part of the step of swapping the spring uh, but might as well show you both. So to swap the barrel you just have this nut here on the front. You loosen that and the barrel just pulls right out. It uses this o-ring here and it squeezes it to make a nice solid connection for the rest of the blaster. And then back here in the shroud, there is also a second O-ring, which goes around the barrel, and that centers it to make sure that every shot is accurate. And if you don't care about the barrel being quick swap and you really want it, <clears throat> sorry, and you really want the barrel solidly in there, there is an optional set screw right inside of that hole. There you go, you can see it there. So if you really don't want to swap your barrel often, and you really want it to stay in there, like, I don't know, if you're 
smacking your barrel against walls or whatever constantly. I don't know why you would do that, but there's a set screw there if you want a more permanent barrel connect barrel connection. Sorry. Anyway, once that's done, in order to swap the spring of this blaster, you need to detension the bars. This is built on aluminum bars, sort of similar to a Lynx, um, but uses a bar tensioner, which is this screw here, and it basically pulls the bars into tension. And what that does is it gives you the best of both worlds of a aluminum bar blaster and a threaded rod blaster. Thread rod blasters are good because they squeeze all of the prints together into a nice solid chunk, but because aluminum bars are, or sorry, but because threaded rods are kind of, I don't know, not thick enough, uh, they can twist. And that's a common issue with like Talonclaw V3s. With aluminum bars, they are very resistant to twisting because they're larger, uh, but they generally uh, don't have adjustability for length. They don't have a way to squeeze all the parts together, so you can have rattle in between parts on most of them. But by tensioning the bars, you're able to have the both best of both worlds. You're able to squeeze all the parts together and get the rigidity of bars. So you end up with something really solid. So anyway, we're going to loosen this thing up here. Oh, I should be using that side. There we go. This is just a cap head screw or bolt or whatever it is. Mine is a little bit tight because this is a uh, beta unit, not the release version, but yours should be slightly easier to turn than this. We're going to take this off, like so. That will take off the front end, like that. You can then see the priming block, which has all of our ball bearings in it, nice and slippery. Uh, then I'm going to push on this stuff with my hand. Then I'm going to push out this takedown pin right here. Then, the entire middle section of the blaster is going to be able to split apart, like so. Oh, I should be having this forwards. There we go. So you can see that you get your entire front half of the blaster and your body bars, and you get your back half of your blaster. It can also be used to ship the blaster uh, more, e more easily. Then, sorry about that. Then you have access to your plunger and your ram uh, for maintenance or for spring swaps. So I don't have a second spring right now, but in order to spring swap, you just knock that out. You got a spring. This is an SF25 from Silver Fox Industries, but this works with uh, long shot upgrade springs, all talon claw length. Uh, K25 and 788, uh, lots of upgrade springs. And then, in order to put in the new spring once you swapped it, there is a little arrow on the front right there. I colored it in with Sharpie to make it easier to see on video, but it's printed into the shell. There's an arrow there, and there's an arrow on the front of the plunger head. You just line those up so they're both pointing down. Drop all this back in there. Wiggle it around a little bit because since this is a plunger rod blaster, or it has a plunger rod that gets caught onto, uh, you do need to get it into its guiding channel at the back. So it's slightly more finicky than something like a Talonclaw style plunger, where the plunger is just like a, a cup, basically. Um, but this allows the spring prime to be smoother. Um, by having the plunger rod there, it acts as a spring guide. So it just needs a little bit of wiggling to get back in, into its proper channel, and it is there now. Make sure that the arrows are facing the correct direction. This one is facing that way. This one is also facing that way. Nice and good. And then you can check that the catch notch is facing down. I'm not sure if you can really see it. There you go. Now you can. Catch notch is facing down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick it all back together. I'm going to stick these body bars down there. 
pusher on it from the front. Put the ram into there. And then just push everything together. Push the body bars back until they line up with the hole again. And I'll just put back in the takedown pin. There we go. And then there is no uh, cotter pin or anything on this takedown pin. You can just push it out with your fingers again. Uh, it is only held in place by a little bit of friction in the print back here, but it's mainly held in place by the tensioning bar up here. Because it pulls on the bars, it will lock the takedown pin in place, so you won't lose your takedown pins uh, during gameplay. This bit just slides back on over the front. You can push that back in and then tighten that back down. The bar tensioning system squeezes all the parts together, so you don't want to over tighten it. But you just tighten this until it feels about right. Mine's a bit squeaky because, again, beta unit. Just tighten it down until it feels about right, which is right about there. None of the parts have rattle between them, so everything's nice and tight. And then you put back in your barrel. If you were using the set screw, you need to loosen that. Uh, otherwise, it will, the barrel will hit into it. But I am not using that. So I'm going to hold it upside down to kind of move the screw out of the way. Come on, set screw. Oh, no. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna loosen that set screw real quick. Might as well show that to you, actually. So, this little set screw up here. Not sure if you can really see the hole. There's a hole there. It is a little M3 screw. You just tighten it with one of these thingies, uh, and then you can tighten in your barrel more permanently if you wish. So I'll push back in the barrel, line it up with the back O-ring, push it past that, and tighten this down. And then my blaster is back together and ready to fire. I'm going to tighten that set screw just to show it off. So you just stick that Allen key in there, it'll line up with the screw, tighten it until it's uh, pushing up against the barrel, and then give it another like half turn to bite into the barrel a little bit. And then there you go. All done again. So there is your Alchemist Pump Action Blaster. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will answer some questions. Um, if you want to build one of your own, there are free files for this blaster in the video description below and also links to where you can buy hardware kits or fully printed blasters uh, from Out of Darts and Silver Fox Industries. And then in the future, there might be more links down there as more sellers come on board. But right now, at the time of release, it's just Silver Fox Industries and Out of Darts. So there is your Alchemist. Go get one and have some fun. I have one more Mega XL dart on my desk. <laughs>